I'm Levi Sim for PhotoFocus.com, and I'm sitting here with Matt Kleskowski. What's up? <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Matt. <laughs> um, and you're, we, we've been talking, and, and you're going to share with us some ideas for while, while we are shooting pictures, how to, how to make a better picture. Some yes. composition ideas. Yes, yes. Composi you know what? Um, I mean, you teach a lot, and you do a lot of reviews, and you you see a lot of mistakes. So yeah, it is composition is one of those things so hard, and it takes a lot of practice. You know, the the tips I'm about to share is really like, I guess I learned certain things. You learn about the rule of thirds and everything, but the tips I'm about to share was just hard learning. Like, like taking photos for years, figuring out what I don't like, being able to quantify what I don't like and put that into practice and it's something I could go do again. Jeez, so. you make it sound like you study this stuff. <laughs> um, it really it was, it, it, this, this, if anything, this was like the, some of the hardest lessons I learned. So well, thank um, you for sharing it. So I'll kick it like the first one if, uh, is, is, is foreground. Mm -hmm. When I get to a location, the very first thing that I do is I kind of figure out, okay, what's the star of the show? Right. So is it gonna be these clouds off in the distance? Is it the light hitting the rocks? Is it some trees or whatever? Is it a lake? So what's the star of the show? And then as soon as I figure that out, I'm looking for something to put in front of my camera. Okay. Because you can get to these beautiful places and you can make a really nice photo mm -hmm. to just walk up and click. But then after you click, which I think you should still walk up, click, take the big picture, yeah, the big you know. Yeah. Um, but after you do that, stand back and find something to put in front of your camera. Um, it really helps draw people in, you know. If you, you rocks in the foreground, yeah. a reflection can be foreground. I mean, sure. there, there's there, the reflection can be foreground too. But okay. Rocks in the foreground, um, a tree, anything. Just mm -hmm. find something to put in the foreground. Bring people into the shot. The, the next one, the, this one's huge. This one, once I figured out what I was doing wrong, um, this one took my photography to the whole next level. Oh, well, now I'm um, on the edge of my seat. I'm ready. So, okay. so that is angles. There's a reason why a shot like this, you could almost not take a bad picture there. Mm -hmm. Because the angles set it up perfectly for photographers. Tell me about that. What landscape photos love are triangles. Okay. And if you look at this photo, this is, there's, this is full of triangles. there's triangles all over the place. Um, so landscape photos love triangles, and and when you get to a location like this, it just sets itself up for photographers compositionally because there's so many triangles. You know, okay. if you look at the foreground, there's a triangle down there. If yep. you look on the left hand side, there's a triangle. On the right hand side, there's triangles. Under, um, under the horizon line, and then above the horizon exactly, line. Exactly. Exactly. Triangles within triangles. Triangles. Yeah. So you know, take a look at this. Same thing. Yep. Um, you know. What if I, I live in Kansas? <laughs> I deliberately set my foreground up off angle, so that's a triangle too. I like. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. And uh, again, this place. This is my friend uh, Michael Jacobs, <laughs> buddy of mine, Michael Jacobs. He sent me this the day before I was about to give a presentation. Oh, perfect. And I was like, dude, I gotta use this photo because um, it's a very common place for photographers mm -hmm. to go. Sure, Maroon Bells a, in Colorado. Yeah. There's a reason for it mm -hmm. because it just sets up so well you for can't photography. Make a bad picture. Yeah. Um, Triangles. Okay, I like what you, you've got a triangle coming down from the from the top right down across, and then triangles intersecting on the left. Yeah, yeah, it just it, it, it works. Now, here's another one: horizontal lines that cut across your photo can get distracting. Right, and they kind of stop the flow of exactly of, of viewing. So, so we think rule of thirds. If we think rule of thirds, I did everything right in this photo. Yes, the, the right? ice is on the third. The horizon's thir on the third. Yeah. And yeah, the ice is on the bottom corner third. I got the top horizon line on the third. I got that line in the middle. It's it's kind third of split in the thirdish, yeah. you know. But yeah. it's not. But even I mean, even this other horizon of the of the wave going across the yeah. the sand is at the third. Yeah. yeah. So so I did everything pretty good there. It doesn't work because there's these the horizontal it's lines static, that go right? across. Yeah. And if you go back, so you look at that, we're like, well, there's a horizontal line going across. Yep. And you go there, there's a horizontal line going across. Yep. The difference is is their foreground. So when we go back to this picture here, all I had to do was shift. Aha, you just twisted to the side, and, and, and now we've only got it. one horizon. Yeah, and yeah. now you've got that angle in the yeah. foreground. Um, you can't always do it. I mean, sometimes your photo is just gonna set up that way. Uh, but you know, when I look back through, through this photo, there was a composition where these rocks were going straight across the bottom of the photo. But having Doesn't them at a work. diagonal across the bottom corner is much better. Yeah, same, same thing here. with this. You know, there, and those weren't even the triangles I imagined first when you mentioned triangles. Yeah. I was looking at the at the valley and things, yeah. but the foreground triangle, exactly. the foreground angle. 
yep. is a real secret here, is, is the key. Yeah, so, so there's just that little difference between that and that yeah. make the photo more dynamic. It's like 24 inches to the right. So uh, that's a big one. And then I'd say, you know, I'll kind of go back through a couple of photos, color, mm -hmm. uh, you know, complementary colors. Um, you know, if you set up green trees on a blue sky, yellow trees, yellow fall color right. trees with a blue sky, color can be a great compositional uh, tip. It can help you when you can spot color in a scene, then you can start picking lenses that show that off. Right. Maybe it's a zoomed in photo. When you can look out there and you can see competing or contrasting or complementary colors, uh, you can really make a, a, a dynamic photo. So That's a, great idea. a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll look for that. Um, I, I was going to only give you three tips. I'm going to give you another one, backlight. Right. I yes. love backlight. Um, That's a trademark can, of yours, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get the sun behind something, right. I love shooting into the sun. But the other thing is, is um, if you can backlight something, and then what happens is it'll glow. And if you move your position to where you can get something dark behind it, Mm. Whatever is backlit glowing really stands off of the yeah. The, now you've got depth. Yeah, because it, it's 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 dark behind it and then it's glowing, you know. And sometimes it's just a matter of you know moving your angle a little bit of where you're shooting. Where there's something bright in the background, move a couple steps the other way. You can put a dark tree that's in the shade behind it. I love it, and, and uh, I, lo I love that the color and the backlight, those two allow me to shoot longer at a location. Yeah, because I'm not reliant on. I'm not necessarily relying first on the five first minutes five minutes of, of light. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can I can then use the sun straight overhead as a backlight, yep. perhaps, or or find an isolated yeah. leaf on a rock, or yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, Matt. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome, man. These are it. it's it's just uh, things that I don't know. I kind of just learned over the years, and, right? Um, I, I try. It's so hard to, to once you got it once you once you can figure out and then put it into words to try to explain like this is what's wrong. This is how to fix it, mm -hmm. and uh, and, and the, the the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. You That's know, great. I, I still have to go out and look at angles, but yeah, it starts to become a little bit more natural now than rather than me think, okay, where's the angles? Um, right, right. So. It becomes it becomes almost like pressing a button on your camera. Yeah. For like you. I walk up and I know exactly where I'm going to go. Stand. That's a good formula. You know, I like it. Well, where can we find some more tips from you? Where can we learn more and, and see what you're up to? Uh, I, so I do everything over at my website. It's mattk.com, M-A-T-T-K. Perfect. And That's uh, easy. I do all my videos and everything there. If you know, best thing to do, sign up for the uh, the the email uh, list over there, and that way you don't have to keep checking. I'll just uh, kind of send you emails when I do. Excellent. Stuff, so. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining. Thanks, us. man. Thanks for having yeah. me. And thank you guys for tuning in. Take care.